Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar and for those of you who were with us earlier uh, today this is the second of uh, of the day uh, when we usually sort of um, have a look at uh, what is likely to be happening in the US markets but obviously with the it being the 4th of July um, everyone with any sense is having a lovely holiday and um, anyway you are here we are here and we have got some things uh, to cover because there's always something to say about the markets even when uh, most of the markets are maybe closed but before we start can i just draw your attention to the disclaimer that i know you can see on your screen as you know trading can be very very risky so please please don't ever use money that you cannot afford to lose in case this is your first time with us This is me, Anna, and I'll be running the session together with my husband, David, who's sitting two desks away from me. We will be looking at the markets and the charts through the prism of volume price analysis, all supported by our really fabulous quantum trading tools. Now, just in case VPA, volume price analysis, is something that maybe you've kind of heard of or um, you know you maybe know a little bit about or you don't know anything about. It's um, the methodology, it's the means of analysing the chart and the price action using volume that David and I have, uh, have been using, well, goodness, almost 20 years. The methodology is now detailed in uh, books that are on Amazon. And for Forex, what we've done, we've put the books together in what we call the Complete Forex Trading Library. It is the digital version, by the way, and it's 9.99. As I said, VPA is um, how we analyze the price action using volume. But for the Forex market and in all the other markets, the chart is just one element, and I, but I know there are traders who look at the chart and, and nothing else. They say everything you ever want to know about what is happening on any market or any instrument is reflected in that chart. And, you know, to an extent, that is absolutely true. But in Forex, and I would say in, a, in any, whether you trade any other market or, in, as, or as an investor, you really have to know a little bit about the fundamental uh, drivers and in Forex, what the release is, what their significance uh, is likely to be and how they're going to impact the price action that is going on on the chart. But David and I, we take it one step further. We call that a two-dimensional approach. We have a three-dimensional approach. And what we have is we have a third strand, which is what we call relational analysis. And that is looking at the other capital markets of bonds, equities and commodities. Forex sits in the center. Forex actually draws all of them together. It's, the, it's, the, it's where the money flows and it flows fastest in sense of, um, you know, moving from one asset class to the other. But what it also does, it then tells us what the sentiment is maybe in some of the other markets such as equity. So for it, we know, for example, if the Japanese yen is being sold and being sold heavily, then equities are likely to be rising. Now, I have to caveat this at the moment because um, a, a lot of relationships that have stood this, uh, that have been sort of going along quite happily for, for months and years lately, there's been a bit of a disconnect. There's all sorts of, there's a bit of weirdness going on in the markets. Some of it to do with uh, po uh, politics, in fact, most of it to do uh, with politics. So for example, um, the, the, the um, the gold is doing really exceptionally well. Now, that has a close relationship with the US dollar in under, I would say under normal circumstances. Generally speaking, if gold is going up, the US dollar is falling and it's patently not happening at the moment. Now, admittedly, it's the 4th of July, markets are very thin, uh, the dollar's really not doing very much. So these relationships, these correlations, they do kind of, you know, fall out a little bit, but here we're talking over the longer term, and over the longer term, they do, they do tend to stack up. And uh, all this is explained in our Forex program, uh, where we, we, we cover in great detail the technical side of trading, but also all these other elements that will hopefully turn you into what we call a complete trader. With regard to the... Um, the, the tools that we've developed, these are the four of the, in the tool set, 
that are specific to the forex market. We have the currency strength indicator, the matrix, the array, and the heat map. In this session, we're probably, I'm certainly going to be focusing on the strength indicator and the matrix. It's, I've got, I've got them set up on my, on, um, on different charts, but on the profiles of my MT4 platform, I use these two to start off as it were and then I tend to move on to the array and heat map but I just want to focus on these two in this particular session because these indicators tell us an awful lot of what is happening in in the market at the moment what has happened uh, in the past but more importantly they also point to what is likely hap to be happening in the future and just very quickly on the indicators, I'm just going to cover them in the introduction. You can buy just one, you can buy a bundle, or you can buy the full package. All indicate if you do buy the full package, it comes with all sorts of advantages. One of them being that if, when we develop future indicators, they're automatically added to your package. So you only pay us once, basically. You get 24 7 support, the indicators are yours, are yours for life, and in, price includes all upgrades. Now, if you buy one indicator and then you want to upgrade to a bundle or the full package, of course, you will always get a credit. But whatever you buy from us, whether it's a single indicator, a bundle or the full package, you have a seven day money back guarantee. And at the moment, the platforms that we have uh, available for the indicators are MetaTrader, NinjaTrader and TradingView, but we are working on TradeStation. You can if you want more information, if you just hop over to quantumtrading.com, there are there's tons of information on the indicators, videos, uh, written documentation, and of course, all, uh, all the prices. Can I also say about the prices? We do, as I said, there are bundles. We kind of try to think of uh, bundles that traders might like, but if there's something there that, you know, isn't cost it out, um, just drop us an email. That's uh, if you email david at quantumtrading.com and say, hey, I've looked at the what you're offering, but I actually, the combination that I want isn't shown. We will always give you a special price. And as I mentioned earlier, the education program, it's the complete forex trading program. It does include the full package of trading indicators. So you have to opt for which platform uh, you want the uh, that you want the indicators to run on, and as I said earlier, whatever you've bought in the past, you will always be credited. And as I said, it's the program we've put together is really to turn you into a complete forex trader and to help you trade with confidence. The website for that is quantumtradingeducation.com, and you can email either myself Anna annacooling.com for more information or as i said david at quantumtrading.com and this is my personal site annacooling.com lots of information on there all my analysis and the uh, information also the, the uh, posts that go up on the various facebook pages that i currently run i'm just going to stop there get my charts up and i'll pass over to david Hi everyone, good to have you with us today. Absolutely glorious day here in the in the UK in glorious sunny Hampshire. I hope it's uh, lovely where you are too and good to have you along. Um, sorry, the reason I was uh, slightly delayed there, I was actually hunting around on the charts looking for anything that's uh, moving more than, um, well actually moving would be a, a, a good description. Um, I'm sure you've seen what the markets are like today. It's pretty thin. Uh, everything's trading in a pretty narrow range. Some markets are open, but uh, quite a few are closed. And uh, we've just opened up just to to see what we can uh, pick out. And I'm going to pass back to Anna. If you have any questions, if this is your first time coming along, if you have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. We're happy to answer them there for you. And if they're longer questions, we'll answer them on air as well. I'm going to pass back to Anna. Anna's got uh, MT5 up. Uh, I've got Ninja Trader running. And uh, we'll just see what we can uh, see. What we can see. Hey, um, the reason I've got it's really just a follow up. If you weren't with us this morning, if you want to catch up with the recording, it kind of gives you more of uh, obviously the background, the backstory to what we did um, earlier. And the recordings will be up on my YouTube channel and also the YouTube channel for quantum trading. And one of the pairs, um, well, let's start with the currencies. The individual currencies that we're looking, that we were looking at this morning was certainly the British pound. There was um, 
there was some rather nice buying of the British pound in uh, it sort of started early doors, didn't it, David? We started at six six o'clock this morning, and as I said earlier, the the first port of call when uh, you know when you come to your trading uh, terminal is the something. If you don't have the currency strength indicator, well, you know, the, uh, not the quantum one or a a similar. We are promoting ours, of course. We've we've developed it ourselves. We I'm often asked, actually, do I know of a free one? And there are there are you know if you Google uh, free currency strength meter, currency strength indicator, you will find them. And I'm often asked, those, well, what do I think of them? And I, I would certainly never diss, you know, other uh, software tools that are out there. The reason I don't uh, uh, recommend them. All I say is you try them, see for yourself. Is I don't know what's gone into them. I don't know how it was put together. What are the what's the algorithm there? This is our indicator. It's our algorithm. We've developed it. We spent many years developing it, and we know that it works. And it's not just for us, but all of the hundreds of traders out there who have actually bought it and are now, you know, very very successful. So that's where we start. And the reason we start is we want to see what is happening with the individual in uh, currencies, what's being bought, what's being sold, before we even look at the pairs. Now, what I've actually done here, I've actually put two indicators on the one chart. You can have them separately, but what I've found is by putting the matrix above the, the CSI is after having looked at the individual lines, and this is the 30, the 30 minute chart, and I have the 30 minute chart because it's, the, it's one of the charts on this particular profile that I have. And I'm just gonna quickly show you, what I have is a Renko chart, I have a three minute chart, and I have the 30 minute. It could be an hour, I just happen to use uh, uh, the 30 minute. And really this is my sort of uh, trading horizon, if you like. And this is what I'd be looking for, trading opportunities. So I start here, and this morning, as I said, we started oh, just before six o'clock. There'd been some nice moves in the um, in in the um, in the British pound. But what was interesting? This is the. Uh, let me get a, actually. Let me get a, a trade. Um, uh, let's have a look. A drawing tool because it's quite interesting. Let me see. Let's just try the pen. See what happens. Right. This is where we were this morning. Well, that's not very good, is it, David? Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> not very good. Oh, dear. These drawing tools are not very good, are they? Let me erase all drawings. Okay. Fine. I'll move that away. I just use my, my cursor. Essentially, there we are. That's it. What was, what, because it's the 4th of July and the, um, in fact, some markets closed yesterday, didn't they, David? They closed down yesterday at about lunchtime. Yeah. Um, what the only um, what we could find was the the pound that was rising and the yen, because what we're looking for is we're looking for divergence. When we have divergence, we know there is movement. There is a trend somewhere in that pair. When all these lines are moving together, it's congestion. So what the CSI does, it not only highlights trends, uh, potential trading opportunities, but also tells us, well, hey, you don't really want to go and have a look at that particular pair because there's nothing happening there at the moment. And this is why we focused on the pound yen. It's covered in the uh, in the um, in the recording. So if you want to catch up and you know see what we actually looked at on the uh, on the charts, you're more than welcome uh, uh, to do so. So that was that was what we looked at this morning. Now what also happened this morning is that you can see here this white line. This is the New Zealand dollar. That um, about sort of half an hour into the into the webinar, David, 45 minutes, there was this. It, it had kind of been drifting lower, as we can see here, the New Zealand dollar, but it was very, very wavy. And then suddenly it really just sort of seemed to collapse out of sight. And in fact, it um, there were some really nice trades against the, um, uh, the, um, the yen. You can see the cross here and also against the uh, pound and against the euro. It was really pretty much being sold. Um, against everything. We've had an attempt to rise and now it looks as though it's falling 
once again, that the Aussie also followed it, but the Aussie doesn't seem to have been battered quite so much, and that's actually turning up. And what's also very interesting about the CSI in this time frame is, can you see the number of currencies that are actually on a sell at the moment, although the pound looks as though it's turning up, versus the uh, the ones here at the bottom which are on a buy. In fact, the only one that's on a buy at the moment is the Aussie, David, is that right? This is actually quite unusual uh, and it's really a function of um, the sort of lack of liquidity and thin markets that we have at the moment because of the holidays. It makes finding an opportunity tricky, doesn't say it's not impossible, but it also tells you there's not a lot of activity. So you may, uh, on days like this, just step back from, from the market. So not only do we have to be aware of session times, session crossovers, but also there is seasonality to trading as well. The marketing hype that this is 24-7 market trade anywhere, anytime, any place, true in principle, but in practice, you have to be aware of what's going on on the ground at any given time. So then we go back, then we go and look at the uh, currency matrix. Let's just pop that up. Let's take that back there. You can toggle the individual currencies on and off. Uh, at, um, you can toggle the individual currencies on. So for example, you've got the euro, that picks up all the euro pairs, and it gives you, again, an instant snapshot of what is going on in all the euro pairs, which ones are moving, uh, which ones are possibly at a point of reversal, but also which ones are doing nothing. In other words, they're in the middle here, so they are probably in congestion. And as I said, if they're in congestion, may offer an opportunity for a breakaway trade from what we call the volume point of control, or you wait until you get an extreme and perhaps you look for a reversal. Is there anything else you want to add to that, David, before I go to the charts on that one? No, yeah. See if I'm okay on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, David's looking at the... Um... <coughs> so, to get back to the uh, pound yen, uh, pound, sorry, uh, New Zealand, what we had this morning, the um, for those of you who are our users that are in the room, uh, we've had a, an update to the Renko indicator for MT5. There was a little bit of a bug in it, which was really annoying. Uh, for some reason, the template and the indicators wouldn't hold onto the indicator. So our tech team have been working on it. They actually worked on it all night and it is now working beautifully. Now, what Renko does, the advantage of having a Renko chart, which is a non-time-based chart. If you don't understand Renko or anything I'm saying at the moment, please, please don't, you know, don't, don't uh, hold back. You know, we, as, as our old uh, uh, teacher used to say, no one is born knowing. But a Renko chart l looks at, um, uh, 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 is presented on the chart purely through the prism of, of price action. And I just want to see what the value of each of those blocks going through. And at the moment, it's set at 2.4 pips. If I just explain a little bit about this indicator, because it is absolutely phenomenal. And here we are. And I use it in conjunction with the time-based charts. Now, what we have here, this is, as I said, it's a Renko chart. You will see it won't have wicks to the top of the bottom of these, uh, uh, of these candles. They're not really candles. Renko means brick in Japanese. Each one of those bricks will be completed once a set number of pips goes through the market. And the indicator works in two ways. You can either set the value yourself. So you could say, OK, I want one of these bricks to print every time two pips goes through, whatever you, you know, one pip, two pips, three pips, four pips. It's entirely up to you. Or the indicator also comes with the option to use the ATR function, which essentially it calculates what is the optimum value for those pips. I personally, I sometimes, I actually sometimes have a chart with both, so I have a fixed value, and other times I will let the, R, the ATR run as well, just to see what, um, uh, you know, what, what is the difference, and if sometimes there's a difference, and sometimes there can be an appreci appreciable difference, depends on how the market is moving. But this was this lovely move higher, as I said, with the pound was moving higher, and it was really driven by this heavy sell on the New Zealand dollar. And the reason it's such a fantastic indicator is because with the uh, trend dots turning blue and the um, 
and the trend monitor turning blue, when they are really matching up very, very closely, you could use that as a potential entry point. You also use it as a potential exit point, but it's the bit in the middle, which is the, the really clever part, because what it does in only looking at price action and pip value, it removes the noise from the market and it just helps but you as i said it's only really used i only ever use it with a time chart because we still need to look at what volume price analysis is telling us what are the candles doing and in this move higher you can see the number of times the volatility came into the market we know because uh, the volatility indicator was uh, triggered. That means that uh, the price action on this candle was outside of the average true range. What happens with volatility? Price will retrace and it will either congest or it sometimes will reverse. On this occasion, and in fact, it pushed higher. When you look at the, at the price action on the Renko chart, it kind of, what the Renko does, it absorbs that volatility and moves it higher um, but when we get a little bit of congestion on the time chart it will pick that up too but we did have a reversal here a little um we had volatility back into the spread of the candle and then we had a reversal but then look what happened although it cleared looked as though to clear the bottom of that candle little hammer came in ton of volume underneath it and away we go another injection of volatility on a lot of volume a little bit of a retrace so up and up and up it went and this reversal here is what we have uh, that we see on the Renko now what has happened subsequently is this we have this awful sort of washing line this is the volume point of control and this is reflecting really the the non there isn't a lot of movement in the market at the moment what would normally be happening is uh, the market would be waiting for the New York traders to join in and sort of saying well, is it going to carry on higher is it going to reverse you know we would be making those kinds of judgments but because of the holiday really not a lot is going to happen what I also want to mention finally before I move over to David is this is the 30 minute chart and what's interesting in the move higher that we saw this morning this is captured in these two in these two um, candles so we went up and up this is sorry this is a one hour the half an hour and half an hour that is captured the whole of that move that we saw on the Renko non three minute chart so that is an hour of price action one two we've had four hours of price action subsequently it's gone into the uh, um, into the spread of the candle we've had a uh, had a shooting star and basically we are going nowhere and this is what you have to understand about vol volatility it's it is a compression of time and in that time you can either have a you will have a massive move in a very short space of time and a lot of traders that's what they like to try and capture they like to try capture these huge explosive moves and having the volatility indicator at least you know when that move is likely to come if you move back onto this chart and look at the 30 minute we have this another really nice example of volatility in the move lower which actually was um, instigated from a breakaway from the volume point of uh, control a volume point of control is that area on the chart where there is price agreement the chart is in balance if you like it's the traders are kind of trading around in a range at some point um, 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 the market will move because you know market doesn't stay in balance forever you have to have a trend either one way or another so we had a breakaway on volatility retraced back in looked like it was going to uh, perhaps reverse but then once it had cleared the bottom of the candle it did actually move low we had a low volume because that that was in Asia Asia we had a pickup of volume then we had this big candle coming down here with volume this was the stopping volume and the hammer candle and then we started to have the reversal which coincided with as I said the buying in uh, uh, the British pound which then carried on and uh, carried on into this morning uh, into this morning in the European session but this is these are the two candles so this is what you have to bear in mind so when you look at a when you look at a chart sometimes and you see um, you see a huge move this isn't a very good example it's on my Facebook page and you look at this great big long trend and you think oh I wish I'd missed that was a fantastic move 
that long trend may only be 10 pips, whereas a very short move earlier on or maybe later could be like 40 pips, but it could be encapsulated in a couple of candles because of volatility. Right, that's all I've got to say. Any questions, let me know. David, can I move over to you if you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I've got a couple of things to say on the fundamental side, particularly to do with the US dollar, but uh, I'll we'll wait until I'll give David a chance to say something. Thank you, darling. Just uh, switching over to Ninja. I'll just slide the chat box out of the way. I, while Anna was talking, uh, going through those charts, I was just been hunting around, looking for um, anything that's really moving in in really any any way at all. Um, I've got the Euro Swiss up here, which is not one uh, I have to say that uh, I would generally focus on. But it, there is a there's a I'll say a modicum of of Euro selling and and Swiss franc buying, but uh, there is a gentle move developing in terms of a trend on that particular time frame. I've got uh, from the fastest. I've got 30 seconds at the top left. I've got two minutes in the right, in the middle here, five minutes on the left, and then down the bottom I've got the 10, the 15, and the daily. And I suppose to put everything in context, if you pull up the daily, I'll just pull that out a little bit. There we go. You know, this is where we are at the moment, and that's pretty much what's happening on all the charts. Been into commodities. There's bits and pieces happening here and there, but essentially it is pretty thin. Uh, Generally, on days like this, Anna and I wouldn't uh, trade because it's um, it's too sluggish. The markets are too slow. If you are going to trade on such days, then the only way of doing it really is to move down to these very fast time frames. I'm not suggesting it's the only way, but it is certainly one way. This is 30 second. You might go down to 15 second. I mean, bear in mind when I pop that chart up, the the, the move that we're seeing now develop away from the volume point of control here. We went through this. Uh, area of uh, what was platform of support and is now obviously a ceiling of resistance you know this is only a handful of pips this is three or four pips so it's uh, you know looking at it you think oh my okay well that's a decent move well from you know this is only 25 down to 20 years so this is five pips up to the top here maybe 10 pips on the whole of this chart so it's um you know that's how tough it is at the moment that said when you look at uh, the volume profile associated with it volume is relative so the fact that volume is very thin today you're still comparing volume with volume. So when you look at uh, a volume bar like this, for example, under a, a widespread down candle, this one happened to have volatility with it. But nevertheless, you're looking at that. What is that indicative of? It's indicative of selling. Now, the selling volume per se on a normal day may be considerably higher than that, but because everything is reduced, so everything is comparable. So you can compare this with what is going on through this region. You are, in other words, you're comparing like with like. So you've got your your low volume bars. You can see them here. We have this little, you know, attempt to rally. Does that look strong? No, it doesn't. Why? Because the volume has fallen away. Price spread's gone up on the first one. That's okay. That looks, uh, you know, a positive sign. Then we get this tiny little one. Volume's fallen away. Dramatic. It's in agreement, but nevertheless, volume is falling. Then we start to see the the downwards uh, sentiment take hold again. You get to a candle like this, markets try to rally only a tiny way, obviously. Everything's in sort of micro level here. Uh, but again, you've got very good volume under that. So clearly the market is not in a buying move for this particular pair on this particular time frame at this point in the session. Next candles, you know, positive in terms of negative sentiment, if you if that's a, a slightly tautologist way of saying it. But you've got a down candle and you've got a good volume under it. So clearly, you know, the buyers are lacking. We then get into the next few candles here. We have where the markets tried to rally good volume under that one, but a very narrow spread of price. So again, it's clearly signaling weakness. This is a very fragile, weak market, albeit it's operating under thin conditions. And that's really it, it encapsulates the way to read volume, whether you're trading in a, a rampaging bull or bear market or whether you're looking at the markets which are very thin as they are today. Volume price analysis applies to all instruments in all time frames. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the instrument is. All you need is a price chart and a volume associated with it. You can then read that. Uh, the trend monitor here you can see what's nice about the trend monitor is the reason we developed the trend monitor was very simply to try to 
give you confirming signals as to when a send, when a trend is running out of steam or when it is, is when it is actually reversing and these are the regions that are the most powerful because when you're in a strong position and the market maybe congests like it has here or maybe even starts to reverse a little maybe you get a pullback or whatever it may be the trend monitor then looks at that and is trying to decipher the strength of that reversal congestion period whatever it may be and whether it is actually a genuine change in trend or whether it's simply one of those phases which comes in all price action and what it does is it changes to these transitional colors you can see it here as well and the 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 benefit the major power of the indicator is actually holding you in to maximize profit from a trend because once the trend's underway and you're in and you've got some decent profit in it then the market starts to reverse that's when most traders get out because they're frightened they're fearful of losing something that they'd already mentally banked and as that starts to drain away and they start to see maybe had a hundred dollars and then maybe it's 90 then maybe it's 85 and then 80 and 75 that pressure increases all the time what happens you close out and ultimately generally find the market moves on in the same direction unless it is a full-blown reversal which is part and parcel of volume price analysis and all the other indicators so what the trend monitor does is it, it gives you that heads up and it helps you to stay in that position to manage your emotion because you'd also be looking at this in multiple time frames you wouldn't be just be looking at it in one time frame and when you see something like that happening and it's gone back into the red again you think great okay you know the trend the bearish trend here is still holding good it hasn't changed and of course when you overlay it into slower time frames comparative two minute much slower than 50 and 30 second obviously trend monitor here is no change at all we've just gone straight through that's fine over here we're in red uh, and down onto here we're in red we wouldn't expect to see any change here either so it's red throughout the piece and basically what will happen is if there is a true change in trend you'll see a signal here first this will chat transition through to bright blue maybe in part of that change sequence this will then gradually ripple through to the two minute where you might see this transition through to a darker red and maybe to a darker blue this one might be just having a darker red at that point but as you see that develop through the time horizons that's also signaling to you that this is potentially a full-blown reversal so it's the power of using an indicator with multiple time frames that is so effective and the reason most traders fail is not because they can't trade it's not because they don't understand charts it's not because they haven't got good indicators it is purely premised on the fact that of 10 trades you need you can have seven or eight losers as long as they're small but you've got to have two big decent decent sized winners in there and that's what trading success is all about and moving forward that really does come down to that very simple fact that that arithmetic fact if you like of life of trading life which is cap off your losers keep them small but then when the big ones come along you have to maximize them and that's the thing that most people find immensely difficult everybody does because you don't want to lose something that you've got you've got a decent position in the market and then oh my gosh it's starting to move against me what do I do I, I think you know what I think I'll take my money off the table because I'm frightened of losing something that I've already banked I've already thought to myself great terrific I've got this money I'm gonna you know that's gonna push my my trading account forward and you close out and then ultimately the market continues on and you're sitting there with trader regret which is also equally damaging wishing that you'd stayed in of course it's hopeless by then because you've let the market run and and by the time you jump back in again the probability is that it is actually getting to revert a true reversal point and that's all part and parcel of the psychology and the emotion managing emotion in trading and one of the beauties of volume price analysis from an emotional uh, management perspective is that your brain is actually in analytical mode all the time so when something happens in the market your instant reaction is not an emotional one it's more of an analytical response to go and look at the reason why you're looking at multiple charts you're looking at the, the volume associated the price action is this a is this a, a is this actually a true reversal or is it not you're much more calm in your decision making as opposed to your knee-jerk emotional response of oh my gosh close out and frighten take what I have off the table and that's really what it comes down to and that's the reason the sole reason we developed the trend monitor to try and help overcome those emotional problems of managing a position once you're in getting in is easy 
it's the easiest part of trading. I'll just flip that up again because you seem to be moving down a little bit now. Uh, getting in is the easy part of trading. The hardest part is actually staying in once you've got a decent bit of profit on the, in the position itself. We've just, just you know, taking this little micro position here, you've got a, a nice strong ceiling of resistance in here. This is the accumulation distribution indicator, which works purely on price. What it does is it looks at the number of times a level has been tested either from above or below and then prints that level in terms of strength because you can see that each of these levels has a different uh, width associated with it and the reason it has a dis different width is because it's a level that's been tested repeatedly so where you have very very wide bands like this one for example that is very strong this one here this may be only ha have been tested once for example it's very light as is this one here this one here is quite strong because it's uh, quite a wide band it's, and that is the power of the accumulation distribution indicator because it's giving those levels visually and, and in addition to that, the actual strength of them also. You can see up here at the volume point of control, this yellow dashed line, which is the fulcrum of the market. This is the volume histogram. This is the volume point of control, which denotes the heaviest area of volume on this chart, which is here. And volume also acts as support and resistance because when you get to these regions where you've got low volume nodes, you expect the price to move through fairly rapidly. You can see down here at the bottom of the chart, we're coming down to an area of very light volume. So we would expect the market to move through there relatively quickly. So these are price based and the volume point of control is volume based, but they're used in the same way in terms of support and resistance. Because if you're moving up to an area of heavy volume on the histogram, like here, for example, then you would expect the market to possibly congest and find it difficult to get through, equally as it should do at the volume point of control, where you've got the heaviest volume of all. Just pop that down again. Okay. There we go. So it's it's a it's a difficult day for trading, other than literally scalping in and out. Um, it's not a day for long-term holding over minutes and hours. It's just one of those days where it's a scalpers scalpers market for the time being because they are thin. And it's just a question of jumping in and out. But the principles of volume price analysis, how to use the indicators and interpret them, is exactly the same in all market conditions. I'm going to pass back to Anna. Speaking, I was actually looking around and seeing what, um, um, uh, you know, whether there would be a sort of quick opportunity and really uh, pulled up the, um, the six minute uh, CSI and we have got some divergence here. We've got some buying of the uh, of the Canadian and we've got the uh, uh, the Swiss franc going up as well. What have we got on the on the opposite side? Well, we've got the dollar. A little bit of a sell on on the dollar. We've got the uh, New Zealand go down again. We've got the yen. We've got the euro. Uh, the pound is kind of you know when it's in the middle here, you really kind of oh, well maybe sort of leave it alone for the time being. And that sort of took me to the um, to the dollar cad. Let's have a look here. Uh, what can we see? Yeah, we can see the buying of the Swiss. Let's take that off for a second. Yeah, what have we got? We've got Swiss yen. We've got uh, cad yen here, and we've also got the cad. The buying of the CAD, obviously, it's the counterparty currency, which is why you've got the Euro CAD coming down, the New Zealand CAD. And I just looked at, at the dollar CAD because it was it had a nice little um, example on the um, on the Renko. You can see here you've got a really lovely move higher. We've got uh, this is the VPOC. I've actually put it on the Renko chart just to it picks up the, the the as I said the congestion areas and we've kind of got this little breakaway. But if you look at the values here, we've got 30.74. Let's go from here 30.70, We're talking about this is what I say 10 pips. Looks fantastic. Oh look at that move. It's 10 pips, but given the you know the the um, uh, the the the, um, uh, the market at the moment, that's actually quite a nice little trade, David. What do you think? And then how that um, how that plays out on the uh, on the time chart? What have we got here? We've got the Renko at 30.72, and you say, oh my goodness, that's fantastic move. Look at that move. It's 10 pips. Most of it contained in this volatility candle. And you could say, well, I've missed that. What do I do now? But uh, you have to wait until there is a clearance 
of the bottom of this volatility counter to see whether the dollar is going to carry on lower. And is it going to carry on lower? Let's have a look at what's happening on the 30 minute. Let's have a look here. We've got here. Let me just take these levels off because we're not looking at Camarilla today. Let's have a look. Here we are. We've got the VPOT right up here at the moment. It probably will at some point move further down because this is the sort of new area of congestion we've actually got quite a nice little move in this in this 30 minute candle where is it heading down well we've got this uh, platform of support here down at 3055 where are we 36 what another eight pips david yeah. eight pips or so to go which is what um you know this is what we um, what we're up against today so that's what I wanted to highlight um, if you've got the if you've got the uh, the Renko for MT5. I have to say we are the only um, the only people to have developed a a viable working Renko option for MT5. There's no one else out there, is there, David? Yeah, so a, a bit of a thumbs up for us uh, for coming up with that one. And as I said earlier about the um, about the US dollar, I just wanted to mention. Let's have a look. Uh, we are in the middle of a currency war, currency wars, manipulation. Well, that's always been that's always been part and parcel of trading anyway. What did Forex Live have to say? Uh, they haven't updated since half past 11. Dollar steady, thin, quiet markets. It really kind of says it all. But I just wanted to highlight this. You, you probably are aware now that we talk about the three dimensional approach to, to trading, uh, to Forex trading, the relational uh, fundamental and the technical but you know the politics is a huge part of it i think donald's got a, a dimension of his own hasn't he david <laughs> the donald effect basically he's been tweeting about um oh he's not happy with the fed is he uh he, he appointed jay powell but he's not happy with him if it was the it was the apprentice he'd have fired him by now because uh he would have done he, he wants a weak dollar for, <laughs> apart from what was going on with the the chinese and because uh, everyone else is uh, driving their currency lower, when a currency is driven lower, if you're an export nation, it makes your exports uh, cheaper. I said that the Chinese actually wouldn't be so too happy, uh, too unhappy about that, because their their currency is still actually pegged to the U.S. dollar. So it's not sort of a black and white thing. It's not a it's not a binary thing. One's good, one bad. There's a there's a lot of there's a big gray area in between um, what is happening between China and the U.S. Anyway, this is what um, this is what the market is beginning to pick up on and will pick up on more once everyone comes back from holidays. This is the tweet that came out on July the 3rd. The manipulation manipulation tree. Now, this uh, site called poundsterlinglive.com, and I've seen this chart elsewhere, has basically said, well, you know, when is the um, when is the last uh, uh, this not this chart? This is the chart, current chart at the moment. But I think they have another chart where the last time this was done. Let me have a look. I found it on my Twitter feed, and in fact, what I'll do, I'll take a screenshot of it. There's actually, it hasn't happened very often with the US dollar. They don't tend to be, uh, you know, manipulators of their currency. If they do, they do it in a, in, you know, not such an overt way. I think the last time was 2000, 1998, 2000. It's on my Twitter feed, but what I was going to say about the, the dollar, there's always a story about the dollar, but this is one that uh, possibly is going to run and run. Uh, when we come back uh, full time trading next week, although I have to say tomorrow we do have the NFP. Is that it? Anything else you want to say? I think from having said there wasn't much going on, we managed to um, we managed to scrape something together. So thank you so much for coming today. We we usually have a third um, webinar today, but honestly, with uh, with uh, markets closed, we've decided uh, we're going to um, that's been cancelled. But we are back with you next thursday so enjoy the rest of the day tomorrow as i said is nfp so you should have a, a some opportunities then and then we are back next week and next week is going to be one of those periods that i often say uh, it's going to be very very volatile so volatility means lots of trading opportunities so thank you so much for coming along and uh, we'll see you next time take care Bye.